Hi, Susan Kermendike here, and I want to work through a Wicked Problem workshop on the housing issue in Orkney. And this is part of our transition engineering labs that we're doing at Harriet Watt University. This is a uh, program that um, we uh, already undertook, but I just want to share how that went. Um, we have lots of crises, right? Housing crisis, energy crisis, cost of living crisis, um, housing affordability crisis, financial crisis. And on top of that, we're supposed to go to net zero. We've got a lot of problems. This is what transition engineering is about, is about um, taking really hard things and doing what we need to do. We're going to focus on one thing at a time, one activity ecosystem at a time. So the activity ecosystem for this lab is the housing um, ecosystem in Orkney. The ecosystem uh, is fixed in a place. So that's Orkney. And once you fix it in a place, you have um, a particular social capacity that you can study and understand. You've got the economics that are going on there. And of course, the environment. Now there's a um, top down um, cross-cutting theme in every in uh, across all of the ecosystems, and that's the rules and governance and infrastructures that exist, and of course the energy flows in and out. Um, and the ground up is where the ecosystems are. So that's values, needs, um, and that's where a place to 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 live, a place to work. Um, the way to get between, the way to get goods and um, get access to services, our manufacturing and our primary production. Those are the key e ecosystems that we're going to work on. All right, the Transition Engineering Lab has three phases. The one we're working on today is the startup phase where we work through the wicked problem. And to, we want to do that to really define the problem in a new way. The, um, we also want to get to know people. We hold a workshop with stakeholders and with our research team and our transition engineering team. And we want to start getting to work on data. So that's what we're doing to uh, today is the startup phase. Out of that startup phase will come the mission. We take that mission forward to the innovation phase and that will um, be another workshop and some more research and produce a shift project. That shift project will go forward for community evaluation and if it is successful then we will prepare a proposal and do a demonstration and testing of that shift project and that should lead to scale um, opportunities for, for scaling up, commercializing, um, deploying, whatever that is. All right, so that's the program. We need to work on the wicked problem and I'll give a little review here of the, um, the issues of wicked problems. Wicked problems are wicked, uh, wicked problem means that there's no ready solution, they defy solutions. And the reason they defy solutions is because wicked problems are of our own making, but it's very hard to see that. So we're using this monkey model to illustrate that so we can um, <clears throat> work effectively. Uh, wicked problems uh, are always about meeting our essential needs and, and um, staying well and healthy and surviving. So the reason we can't solve them is because uh, there's there's just so many problems and so many things in the way that that it's it's hard to see what the problem is. So we're going to take um, six perspectives on the wicked problem and. Um, for example, the, the monkey trap here, the monkey trap, the monkey loves bananas, and that is an essential need for monkeys is monkey food. Um, but the monkey has a problem, right? So let's look at it a few different ways. What's the monkey's problem? Well, the first one is that the hole in the jar is too small. If the hole was bigger, then the monkey could just pull out the banana, um, have a snack and be on his way and everything would be fine. But the hole in the jar is too small on purpose. <laughs> That's the design of the monkey trap. All right, by the hunter. All right, the, there's a rope holding the jar to the tree. And if the monkey could just invent something, if he could find an innovation, say a knife, if the monkey could do some research and invent knives, then he could cut the rope, get away with the jar, and probably with time figure out some way to get that banana out. 
Um, is that going to happen before the hunter comes? <laughs> Probably not. So sometimes our miracle solutions that we're looking for, um, sure, they would be great, but they very well may not happen in time. Um, but they're quite distracting. <laughs> the hunter is coming. The hunter has a club and the monkey knows this problem is coming. Um, and the monkey is protesting and unhappy and yelling, and that does not fix the problem. It does not make the hunter go away, and it doesn't make the jar opening any bigger. Um, the bigger problem that the monkey has really is that there's a market for monkey soup. Yes, the village likes monkey soup. That's why the hunter is spending time going out to resource, extract resources from the jungle and bring in the monkey meat. Oh, dear me. So what's the issue at the heart of the problem here? Should there be a law against monkey soup? Should the village go ve vegan and then the problems wouldn't exist? Well, for the monkey. Um, but really the problem right here is that the monkey won't let go. The monkey has created his own problem and that's that he won't let go. And he's having a hard time seeing that wicked problem. That's how they work. So the wicked problem of housing, how is that like a monkey trap? I don't know, but let's let's go with it. Um, we are going to work through um, the housing issue from several different um, angles, and the participants will use sticky notes to capture and contribute um, their ideas about uh, the six different perspectives on that wicked problem, and um, the the their wicked problem. Um, uh, stations around the room and the participants can freely go to to all of them or one of them wherever they think they can contribute ideas um, into this discussion. So that's how it works. Um, oh, forward would be better. Let's focus on the essential need. That's not that hard. We need shelter. <laughs> We definitely need shelter. And that shelter has to have access to activities. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, the need for shelter can be a little different depending on who you are. So thinking about that, working from um, uh, workers, uh, students, renters, the elderly and disabled, all have slightly different needs for housing uh, and industry influx workers. So people who come to do construction or, or to, you know, to do mining or oil development, um, they have different needs as well. And then we've got tourists who have very temporary needs and second home buyers have different needs. Um, the, the project has a lot of context, right? So we could get into waste, we could get into water supply, sewer systems, um, electricity, the grid, but those are gonna be out of scope for this exercise. We're gonna assume there's water, we're gonna assume there's electricity and all that brings. We're also um, looking at uh, the access to the house, the, the road, the ferries, the infrastructure, that's all in place. And um, the workplaces where people are trying to go. So. So those are, are out of our scope. All right, also, I think the tourism and the second homes are actually not essential needs. Those are, those are optional needs. Those are nice to have um, once, so to speak. So we aren't gonna focus on those at the moment either. We're going to take those out of scope. Now, as a practice, let's run through, get the sticky notes ready and look at the six perspectives on shelter in Orkney for people who work in Orkney and would like to own a home. All right, the system that we have at the moment works great. There are a lot of people who own really nice homes in Orkney. Um, they are safe, they're solid, um, they're available, there are homes available. Um, and if you can find an uh, EPC band A, so a very nice energy efficient house. They're very nice and um, comfortable, probably more comfortable than houses have, have ever been in history. Yes. Um, and if you can find a place near work that you can afford, it's all great. So we have that it works great for some people. Uh, what is not sustainable about the way housing um, is in Orkney? Uh, we do use fossil fuel we use oil to heat a lot of those houses and we use fossil fuel in cars. So fossil fuel is always a, a non-sustainability. It's a finite resource um, that must go down in order to meet targets. 
and uh, commitments. And then, of course, if your system is based on growth, it is inherently unsustainable. That unsustainability may come in the short term in, in the shape of a boom and bust cycle um, or a very, or a long term, you know, you, you can't have growth forever. So the growth in this system is the number of houses, the amount of land used, and um, the home prices going up, 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 rent prices going up, up, up. Um, on an island, the amount of land is finite as you can, you can see it. And so, yeah, that's, uh, um, we think there's unsustainabilities. Ah, oh, do the homes that we have satisfy our needs? Sure. Like again, if, if you can find them, right, if you can find it, does it cause problems the way that, that our housing system in Orkney right now, does it cause problems? What are the problems? What are the harms? And, uh, you know, a, a lot of people said inequity, social stress, fuel poverty. There's something wrong. There is a housing crisis. The amount of debt. Um, and debt is an interesting thing because you pay debt to banks that are not in your community. That's a lot of money. The biggest thing that people spend money on every month, it, that money is going out of the community. It can't do anything in the community. It just goes out and away and it never comes back. So that that is a drain on the local economy. It's an erosion on the local economy as mortgages get bigger and bigger, as the house prices get bigger. Um, there's a high percentage of income, uh, a high percentage of your income going to the home. So that erosion just gets worse um, and, and the local economy and well-being get worse. All right. Um, we want green solutions for our, we want solutions for our, our housing crisis and um, insulation and retrofitting, of course, building more houses. Because the house price is going up, then our belief is that we must need more houses. That must be the problem. So, so we can build more houses. Uh, we can get heat pumps to replace the oil. We can um, get hydrogen to replace the oil. And we can have maybe like co-housing, new kinds of housing, tiny homes, something like that. So there's definitely ideas about solutions. And um, why aren't those solutions happening then? Because it's too hard to change. Why? Well, usually the cost. The problem with financing retrofits is that unlike the finance of building a new home, um, you, you don't really get a return on that. If you, if you invest to build a home and then you sell the home, you, you get a profit from that, right? You, um, you get an uplift of the land price. You, you can sell the home for more than what you spent to build it. And if you hold on to it for any time, then the price goes up and you, you make a profit. But if you retrofit a house, put in new windows and, and insulation, that doesn't uplift the value of the property. So that's um, that's a, a, a reason why it doesn't happen. Also regulations and things like that, uh, uh, politics and, and co complexity are hard to get through. Um, they just delay everything and make things more difficult. The asset value for current owners, couldn't we have a solution to the problem um, of high house prices by bringing down the house prices? Well, yeah, tell that to the current owners. <laughs> they won't be happy about that because they think that's wealth in their pocket. Now, interesting, the asset value really um, depends entirely on what someone is willing to pay for a house on a given day. It is not a thing that we can derive from first principles from an equation. It is a, a market force. It's a, it's a, you know, magic of the market thing. Um, all right. And the risks to profits, um, if there's changes, yeah, there's always risks if there's changes and the, the kind of changes that it would take to have affordable housing available in the right place looks like changes in the way that the market works. And so that uh, makes people nervous and therefore hard to change. Very hard for local councils to intervene in um, property development or in um, uh, building new houses in, in old places, that sort of thing. So it's hard. <laughs> All right, so now we have a Wicked Problem Workshop where people add their knowledge and their ideas into this system for those working households. 
um, like I said, the, the wicked problem wheels for the different um, ways of looking at the housing problem or spaced out around the room so people could go to all of them or to one that they knew more about and wanted to focus on. Um, so the, the student housing rental and the housing for, for wind farm workers, um, and then also the, the essential energy for the home, if anybody wanted to give inputs on that. All right, so we ran the workshop and um, we had good participation, about 38 people um, got involved. And um, top of the the number of sticky notes was was unaffordability, the costs, cost of everything, cost of the house, cost of the rent, cost of repairs, cost of building new houses, cost of regulations, cost of compliance. Um, yeah, cost. That's that's the problem, and the also uh, a really big problem of inequality increasing, mortgages, taxes again, more costs, cost, cost. <laughs> And um, some people noted empty homes and second homes might be a, a part of the, the cause of the problem, but they um, don't don't know about that yet. And planning and regulations is the planning delivering enough homes fast enough um, or in the right place? And empty rooms in big houses that that there there may actually be lots of room for people in the community, but but the rooms are empty and the homes are empty. And, and people are having long commutes. People had a lot of experience of, of driving a long ways on a small island <laughs> because they couldn't find a house where they worked. All right, so um, getting all those uh, things together across all of the different types of housing, um, what we got to as the issue at the heart of the wicked problem that thing of our own making that has us trapped in this uh, in this system that is not going to go well for us. We think that what that is is the actual system itself. It's the the market-based system. The way that that market works, the way that um, the planning and the market interact, um, the way that finance and investment have come into the the housing market, um, the way that uh, people believe they have a lot of value in uh, wrapped up in their home because of the market forces, that that system itself is what's got us trapped and we created that system. So that system has been eroding the access to a place to call home for, for people, especially lower income people. It erodes that first in the location near work and near our activities. So that is what we're taking forward then to the innovation phase to, to really focus on that system, the, the market-based rules and regulations, human constructed system. It's, it's not physical, <laughs> it's a human construct. That's what we're going to focus on in our innovation phase. <laughs>